Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 8 to 15. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances to the to say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, and some from the region of Aswan. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. This is the word of God. And the second passage is from John chapter 5. The Gospel according to John chapter 5, we read from verse 17 to 23. John 5 from 17 to 23. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these. So that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Beloved, once again, this is the word of God. Uh, meditations this morning is under the theme, In the Arms of Jesus We Are Safe safe in the arms of Jesus. The gospel passage which was read began with uh, Jesus' defense. And, and naturally, if Jesus is defending himself, we, we need to know before whom he was defending himself and for what purpose. And so it, it forces you to go back to read from the the beginning of the chapter, John chapter 5. And the story we have there is a very familiar one. We are told about the man who was a paralytic, a lame person who had been laid beside the pool of Bethsaida. 
where we are told that there are times that angels come from heaven to stir up the pool. And whenever the pool is stirred by the angels, whoever gets into that particular pool, whatever disease has afflicted the person, gets healing. As a result, we are told that a lot of blind men and lame people have gathered around the place, waiting for the pool to be stirred. The interesting thing is that whenever the pool is stirred, it is not anybody or everybody, as many as you can go in there and you are healed. No, but only the first one. So you can manage, you, you, you can see the competition that will go on there. A competition of blind men and lame men competing to reach the pool first. Jesus went there, and when he went there, he was told of one man whom, who had been there for 38 years. And we are told that Jesus Christ went to him and asked him, ah, do you want to be healed? Do you want to get well? You have come to a place for healing, and for 30, 38 years, you are here. What is happening to you? The man's response, as recorded for us in the New International Version is, Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Immediately, you begin to think about the condition of the man. And in fact, it helps you to understand why Jesus Christ should ask the first question in the first place. Do you, do you actually want to get well? For if you have been here for 38 years, and you are still not getting what you want, and you are still here, what are you here for? Perhaps the issue will have to be that uh, the man who is complaining that whenever the pool is stirred, the water is stirred, and whilst he tries to get in there, someone else goes down ahead of me. Either they are very smart, or perhaps they are slightly physically stronger than he is, or perhaps they had people to support them to get to their place first. But here was somebody who was a lame person. And you can imagine when the water is stirred, you hear of it, a lame person, when do you stand up? How do you walk or run? Or perhaps running will be out. Or well, even if he, he, if he said he was running, his running might be something like crawling. And so by the time you are there, someone else has taken lead. And the person is healed and goes away. You ask yourself, have this man nobody to assist him? Uh, you come to a place for healing 38 years. The only shortcoming is that you need help when the water is stirred to get into the pool first. You cannot do it yourself, so for 38 years you are, you are there. And yet you are there and you don't, get, you don't get help from anybody. Perhaps the man has made the place his home. But in fact, I cannot imagine what, at what time that he can get the healing that he so urgently needs. He's weak. Not only is he weak because of his ill health, he's despised. Nobody is in there to support him. And if something like this to happen to anybody, anybody, the result, as we all know, will be a very sorrowful one. How can I be here and always people go ahead of me and I'm still here and nobody thinks about me, nobody cares for me, and I'm here for 38 years, I'm still here. Interestingly, we are told that after Jesus Christ had spoken to the man, and the man has narrated his, pro his challenge to him, the words of Jesus Christ to this man was, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And we are told, according to John, that instantly the man got strength, he got up, he picked his mat, and could walk. He, need, he no longer needed to, to run into the pool. That was something that everybody should have been glad about. Unfortunately, what follows is that we are told that this, done, this was done on a day called Sabbath day. And so, as usual, the bishops 
the general overseers came in to confront Jesus. That is why we are told that Jesus was defending himself. He was defending himself before those who were accusing him for working on the Sabbath. You listen to how he defended himself, that you call uh, some, a day Sabbath. My father is always working. He's always delivering. He is always, always saving. And because of that, I also continue. I do nothing of myself. Whatever I do is something that I see my father doing. So my father is still in the business of saving people. So it doesn't matter to me what day it is. The most important thing is to save souls, to better the lives of people. So Jesus Christ delivers this man, and the man goes away. We are told that he met him again and uh, gave him certain commands. We will come to it later. But the point that I want to make here from what we have so far heard is that Jesus Christ is the person whom, if when everybody has run away from you, you don't have any hope. Your condition is hopeless. That is the time that Jesus Christ comes in. And if we trust him, he has the capacity, he has the ability, he has the power, and he has the love with which to do that. I'm very mindful about the three words that I have used. His ability, ability to, to, to deliver a sick person or to heal him or her is something that was important. But as all of, many people have walked, walked past this man several times, but none had the ability. They could not because they were ordinary human beings and they couldn't do anything about it. Jesus had that ability. He could heal. You listen to him saying that my father continues, even he, even he raises people from the dead. And because of that, I'm also doing it. Whatever my father does, I also replicate it here on earth. That is the business for which I am here. And so if you are in the arms of such a person, indeed, as the theme puts it, in Jesus' arms, we are safe. Because there never will come a time when he will say, as for this one, I am not able. Ability, he has it. He's capable. He is the one who co-created the whole world. And therefore, to talk about ability does not exist. He can do everything. Interestingly, Paul at one point says, I can do all things. But he said that he can do all means these things through this man who always has the ability. In the arms of Jesus, we are saved. That is the beautiful news that we are that's being brought to us this morning. And I also say that Jesus Christ does not only have the ability, but he has the authority. He has authority. But for his authority, he couldn't have healed on the Sabbath. He had authority even on the law. The law of which our people, the, as I said, the bishops and the general overseers were so fond of and always accusing Jesus for working on the Sabbath. He had authority to the extent that he was not under the law. He is God himself. We listen to him speaking to, at his defense, he was saying that, you people are trying to judge, stop the judgment. My father has given all judgment to me. It is rather I who judges. I am rather the judge, not any of you. Mine is the authority to do anything that I see my father doing. And God, his father, was doing all things. He had authority. You couldn't uh, 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 accuse God of committing sin. That, was, that, 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 was, that would be blasphemous. You couldn't accuse God of sinning. God does not sin. He knows what is right. In fact, his actions are law. As usually we will say in our own land, when the Supreme Court speaks, it becomes law. And so Jesus Christ did not only have ability to do whatever he wanted to do, always positive though, he had also the authority to do it. And lastly, as I said, he had uh, ability and authority and also the compassion, the love that he had for people who are disadvantaged in society. But as it is this that led him to the pool of Bethsaida that day where this man got his healing. And so for this man, 
The thing that we are speaking about is quite relevant. In the arms of Jesus, we are safe. It doesn't matter who, who you are. This man has been there for 38 years, but when Jesus comes in, everything changes. Perhaps we can picture our own selves in our various conditions of life. It could be a health problem. It could be a financial problem or whatever problem that you have. And not even seeing ourselves as uh, individuals. But even look, looking at ourselves as a nation, Jesus helps not only individuals, he helps groups of persons, nations. And in fact, God works through nations as he works through his nation, Israel. Going back to the passage which we just read, Isaiah chapter 49, here are the people of Israel who had been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. 38 years we thought was too, too much. But the people of Israel, God's own people, had been in captivity for 70 years. And as it were, they have become despondent. They have come not to trust that it is, it is possible for them to be delivered in any way. Specifically in 49 verse 14, which we read, the Israelites were saying this. Christ God was promising that he was going to deliver his people, he was going to make highways out of the mountains and so forth and so on so that his people can come back to enjoy the blessed land of Israel. Listen to what the Israelites themselves were saying. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Wise God was promising to deliver his people for themselves, looking at themselves for last 70 years we have been here. We have forsaken how God has forsaken us. In fact, perhaps he has forgotten that we exist. And then the prophet comes in with this beautiful thought which William Carper has woven into a hymn. He says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. In Jesus' arms, in the arms of God, we are always safe. William Kappa wove this into his hymn, MHB 432. Can a woman's tender care cease towards the child she bear? Yet, yes, she may forgetful be, but I will never forget you. I will ever rem rem remind you. Uh, and you look at the analogy that is given there, God or the prophet comparing the Israelites claiming that God has, uh, he has, uh, uh, as it were, he has, he has gone away from them. He has, he has forgotten us. We don't have any help. We have been here for 70 years. Prophecy after prophecy, but we are still here. We are suffering. They are still being treated as slaves by another, an, an, another king. And he compares this one to a mother and a, and, and a baby. You are mothers, but as you might understand it better, is it possible for a mother who has delivered a baby, perhaps taking care of the baby in the belly for nine months, and after nine months, bringing forth the pain there, and after that, the taking, care, caretaking of that baby. And then, does it happen that this mother will now say, I have forgotten to feed my baby? It is unnatural. But the prophet was saying, well, it, is, it might be possible, even though it is not usual. And it's possible that sometimes as human beings, we forget to do the things that we should do to show the love that we should show to others, even for our own children to take good care of them. But the fact is that even if human beings will forget, I, God, will never forget you. In my hands, you are always safe. I think thoughts like this should bring us running to God for his safekeeping, for his safekeeping. 
Because as human beings, we have our shortcomings, and sometimes we cause the hardships that happen to us. We ourselves are the causes. The man who was healed by the pool of Bethesda. Initially, we are not told the reason for his sickness. But when the officers, the bishops, came to confront Jesus Christ, and whilst Jesus Christ was defending himself, after the defense, he saw the man again, if you read on from uh, John 5. He met the man again. The man had been questioned by the people, ah, but who healed you? Don't you know that today is a Sabbath day? Well, that's what I mean, I don't know anything. That, that, that man, he said, he's Jesus, it was he who healed me. What do you think about that man? On a Sabbath day, he heals you. Trying to draw him into controversy, but the man pulled himself out safely. Jesus Christ himself met the man again and said, take care. Be very careful. As I freed you, go and be careful not to repeat the sins that you have been doing. Else, something worse might happen to you. Perhaps this draws our attention back to the fact that his disease, the, the reason for, for being forsaken at the, uh, at the pool, was as a result of sin. We don't know exactly what kind of sin he committed. But it could, it could be that he was a, a very wicked person. So if that man is uh, downridden, is bedridden, who, who would take care of him? Perhaps you wouldn't wish he was dead. He had no help. But Jesus Christ, the helper of the helpless, comes in and he, and he regains his help. If actually it is the cause of, uh, sin was the cause of this man's condition, then perhaps we are all in, deep, uh, in danger. Because as human beings, we also fall short of God's glory. We don't obey all his commands. Sometimes at best, at best, we do the best we can. But even the best that we, we can do, you sit back and you yourself look at it and you see that there are still, it's still 40. And so if God is going to punish us for these sins by way of allowing disease to attack us, then we are in for trouble. But the message which this morning should gladden our hearts is that in the arms of Jesus. Yes, we may be sinful people. We have caused, committed a lot of sin. But Jesus Christ has mercy. So he comes to us, and when nobody is prepared to assist us to get our healing, he commands, take a, a stand up, take up your mat, and then walk. This morning, these are the reassuring words that the Lord gives us, even as we continue to reflect on Lent. And reflecting on this on Lent, perhaps the question to ask ourselves that if this is how Jesus is, why at all should we be straying away from him? A man who is so compassionate, a man who is so capable, a man who has authority, who can deliver us of every danger that we find ourselves in. We should rather be running towards him at all times. But as you all know, we sometimes stray and we got ourselves into enemy territory. The enemy has authority over us because we have committed the sins that the Lord says we shouldn't. We lose his protection and we are afflicted. If sin is the cause of some of these things, then then time it, calls upon, it behoves on all of us to reflect on our shortcomings and especially anticipating God's love the safety that we enjoy in his arms. We should be willing to confess our shortcomings so that he can willingly and gladly show compassion on us just as he showed on this lame person. This is the message that we are contending with this morning. And it is my hope and prayer that we will continue to use this period of Lent to reflect deeply on our own human situations, conditions that we find ourselves. Remember also that we have said that it is not only individuals that Jesus Christ helps, or God helps nations as well, just as he helped the nation of Israel, telling them that you think that I have forgotten you or forsaken you, that is not the case. Can, is it possible? It is not possible for a woman with that tender care forget the child she bears. But even if that is possible for a human being, I, God, 
I'm always available to help you. God helps nations. So we are going to pray as we reflect on this. Thinking of our own conditions and then as well thinking about our, our own country. That we will feel the hand of God on us as a people. So that we will not, not con consider ourselves as people who have been despised by God. People who have been forsaken by God. For indeed, it has never been his will to forsake his people. Just as he did not forsake Israel, he will not forsake Ghana. But Ghana will have to be cautious all the time to run to him, to be at his feet, to run away from the wrong things that we do so that we can always be safe in his arms. So as we enter into a moment of prayer, I will want us to sing William Carpaugh's hymn, 432. Hark, my soul. Unfortunately, we don't have the hymn books. I don't, I don't know how many we can sing. Hark, my soul. It is the Lord. It is thy Savior. Hear his word. Jesus speaks and speaks to thee, saying, poor sinner, love us thou me. 432, if you have a hymn. Can a woman stand up here? Can a woman stand up? Sister, whether her child she bears. Mother, child. Yes, she may forget for me. She may forget. Yet will I remember thee. Yet will I remember thee. And the last stanza says, Lord, it is my chief complaint. My love is weak and faint, yet I love thee and adore. Oh, for grace to love thee more. Lord, it is my chief complaint that my love is weak and faint, yet I love thee and adore. Oh, for grace. Shall we enter into a moment of prayer? Beginning with prayer for our nation, like the Israelites who thought they had been forgotten by their God. They thought God had forsaken them because 70 years they have been in captivity, they have been in exile. Promises of deliverance has come and go, yet they still left there. Ghana is not 70, we are, we are 64, close to that. At independence, we thought things would have been faster than this. But we keep struggling, struggling. Let us pray for our motherland, Ghana. Let us commit Ghana into God's care. But God's promise that even if a woman's tender care drives him away from her, away from his own baby, yet he will never forget us. Let us thank him and pray committing our nation to him, asking for his help. Particularly our economy, which we have been struggling with since independence times. We take two steps forward, something happens, we are back again. We can only be safe in the hands of God. So let us pray to him for his intervention. That we will not go begging from other nations. But we will be able to harness the resources that he has given us. And with honesty, bring them together as a nation to take care of the nation. Let's pray for Mother Ghana, for we are struggling. 
Sometimes we blame ourselves for corruption, bribery, and other things. Dishonesty at work is always happening. Sometimes it is corona. What can we do about that one? Commit Mother Ghana to God's care. Pray that all everything that, have, that, that, that has afflicted us, that has making us impossible to rise as a people. We want to hear his command to the, lep to the lame person. Stand up. Take, your, take up your mat and walk as a nation. In so doing, let us pray for those at the helm of affairs. The executive, primarily. Let's pray for the president and his team. Let's pray for God's visitation on them whenever they meet to think about the economy of Ghana. That he himself will show the way, guide us. Let us as well pray for all the other arms of government, the judiciary, that they will be honest in their duties and faithful to whatever the law says. So there will be justice in the land. Pray for the Chief Justice. Pray for courage and wisdom from above for him. and all the other Supreme Court judges and all other people who matter as, as far as judicial issues are concerned. And let us also pray for our parliamentarians, those who make the laws that govern our country, that they will be guided by God to make laws that will help this nation to grow out of poverty. For God actually has not despised us. He has not forsaken us. He has not forgotten us as he, pro he has promised. But the speaker of the parliament will be led by God's spirit when he presides over the meetings of parliament that this our legislative body will perform its functions creditably to honor God and for the benefit of this nation as a whole. These are only policy makers. Let us pray for the rank and file of the workers of our land. Each and every one of us ha ha has a part to play for the economy of our nation to get better. That hard work, honesty, and faithfulness will drive all of us to do that which is best for our country. Let us do it in the fear of the Lord. And come into ourselves, commit yourselves to God's hands. This lame man has been there for 38 years. I don't know how long you've been with the challenge that you are confronted with. We are safe in the arms of Jesus. Let him know your concerns. Tell him how you have suffered, but yet believe and trust he is able. Plead with him that even if it is some, uh, sin has caused this challenge, either by you or by any of your forebears, pray for God's inter intervention. After all, he came and to pay the penalty of all our sin. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
to pray for deliverance from sin, not only for yourself, but for your, for your whole family. If you had anything spiritual or physical that has afflicted your whole life, you will receive deliverance from his hands. Because in the hands of Jesus, we are more than safe. Claim his protection over your life for this day. And pray committing yourself to his care. Just as he commanded the healed person, as you go away, do not go and repeat those sins. Pray for strength to stay away from sin as we go to work, as we go about our duties today. Sin that only enables the enemy to come in to destroy. Under Jesus' protection and care this morning, you are more than conqueror. Don't stray to enable the enemy to steal himself inside to destroy. That is always his objective. He comes in to steal, to destroy. But Jesus protects us. Stay under his feet. Pray for strength to remain faithfully to him at his feet. Let us now bring our prayer to a close. Almighty God, our Father, we give thanks to you for you are the creator of the whole universe. You can do all things. You are able. Father, you are not bound by any law. In your actions, we find our loss. So you have authority to deliver us from all, everything that afflicts us as human beings here on earth, whether as individuals or as a nation or as a church. We thank you for the message that we have received this morning that in your arms we are safe. We pray, giving thanks to you, that continue to protect us all our days. Help us by your strength to be able to walk in your ways and not stray into sinful ways to enable the enemy get access to us. But grant us your grace that we will be obedient to you in everything so that we can continue to enjoy your protection. We pray for our motherland and we pray for the, uh, Ghana's well-being. Oh, Father, that Ghana will rise and be what you have destined it to be in the community of nations. That all of us will enjoy and always give praise and adoration to your name. But the kind of compassion that you have, Father, we have nowhere to go. We come to you this morning. We pray for mercy, for any shortcomings on our part. Forgive us, heal us of all our shortcomings, and then make a stand to continue to lead a life that is well-pleasing to you. All these and other blessings we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.